Chapter 1 Happy birthday, Cass, says Nyla. Thanks. I dunk a chip into the salsa and eye the mariachi band singing in the corner of the restaurant. I hope Nyla didn't tell them it's my birthday. So how does it feel? She asks. The great one eight? I shrug. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal? She scoffs. But now you can buy cigarettes. Ew. I crunch the chip. Like I would ever. Agreed, ew. But you can do so much now, she elaborates. You can purchase lottery tickets. You can open your very own bank account or get a tattoo. You can drink alcohol in Europe. Yeah, I'll get right on that. My point is, now you're a grown-up. She leans forward across the table, like she's about to impart some secret of the universe. You're an adult, she whispers. I lean forward, too. I kind of liked being a kid. She sighs and sits back. Boo, you're no fun. You're just jealous because you're not going to be 18 for another 29 days. I love lording it over Nyla that I'm exactly one month older than she is, and therefore wiser. She scoffs. When we're 40, you're going to wish you were the younger one. When we're 40, I definitely will, I grin. But right now, I'm happy to be your elder. She sticks her tongue out at me. Hey now, respect your elders, I scold her, and she rolls her eyes. I check my watch. It's 7.30. Still time to sneak in to see mom. We should get going, I start to say. But at that moment, the mariachi guys show up to serenade me with happy birthday in Spanish. Nyla sings along as I glare at her. The waitress plops a giant serving of fried ice cream down in front of me, a single candle burning in the middle. Everyone in Garcia's turns to look. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I blow out the candle and push the bowl of melty ice cream into the middle of the table so Nyla can share. I hate you, by the way. No, you don't. She licks ice cream off her spoon. I'm pretty sure you love me. Fine, I love you, I grumble. I notice that the elderly couple at the next table over is not so subtly staring at Nyla. It happens. Occasionally, people in this white bread Idaho town act surprised when they see a black person. It's what Nyla calls the unicorn effect. People see her and stare like she's some rare and magical creature that they've only heard about in storybooks. Which is weird for Nyla, because she was raised by a white family in a white town and doesn't totally identify as American black. We ignore the gawkers and polish off the rest of the ice cream. Nyla gestures at the waitress for the bill, which she pays. She always pays, birthday or not. I try not to feel guilty about it. Dinner was excelente, I say as we walk out to Bernice, Nyla's car. Gracias, senorita. De nada, Nyla replies. Yay for three years of middle school Spanish. This is unfortunately about the collective sum of our ability in that language. We climb into the car. Seatbelts, Nyla says primly, and we're off. I get the sensation that we're sailing instead of driving, which is normal. Bernice is a boat. She's named after Nyla's grandma because she's a total grandma car. Silvery blue and enormous and built like a tank. But Bernice always gets us where we need to go. On the road again. Nyla sings as we're cruising along through Idaho Falls. Just can't wait to get on the road again, I join in. I check my watch. 7.40, still time. Then I realize we're heading in the opposite direction of home. Hey, where are we going? Oh, I thought we could take a drive, Nyla says mysteriously. Like this is something people do, take drives. A drive where? I ask as we turn on to Hit Road. 
Hit Road, I think, for more than the hundredth time, is an epically bad name for a road. Why not call it Smash Street, Insurance Claim Lane? Nyla glances in the rearview mirror. To Thunder Ridge. Um, why? Thunder Ridge is a hill that overlooks the city. As far as I know, making out is about all people do there. It has a nice view, Nyla says. I thought we could hang out a bit, talk. We've been talking all day. That's practically all we do is talk. Cass. Nyla. I give her a look. What's going on? Nothing. Can't a girl take her bestie to a quiet spot to contemplate the meaning of life and birthdays? I guess, but you know my dad has that birthday tradition where he tells me the story of the day they got me, and we look at my baby book, and there's me in a bunch of frilly pink dresses, and I want to vomit, but I also kind of love it. I don't want to miss that. You won't miss it. She's got her phone out now. She's driving and texting. She knows I loathe driving and texting. I hate texting, period, especially when you're supposed to be having real time with someone. It's important to be present, my mom always says. And come to think of it, Nyla was texting all through dinner, which is not normal Nyla behavior. Ny, come on, I say. What's going on? Nothing, she says, and then suddenly changes her mind. You're right, Thunder Ridge is a silly idea. I'll take you home. She pulls into a subdivision and then flips a U at the entrance and turns us around. We drive back toward our part of town. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong, Nyla sings. I don't sing along this time. I'm confused. I feel like I'm failing at some kind of crucial friend test. We stop at a light and Nyla finishes singing John Denver. She looks at her phone, touches up her lipstick in the mirror, checks her phone again. Is there something you specifically want to talk about? I ask, because I can talk. No, I'm good, she says, but obviously she's still being weird. I do love our meaning of life conversations. She smiles, me too. I'm here for you. I know. So you can talk if you need to talk. I'm listening, I swear. She seems to consider this for a minute, and then she says, I can't think of anything to say. Besides, we're almost there. We are. Bernice veers off into my neighborhood. There are a bunch of cars parked along the street in front of my house. Nyla has to park a little ways down. You want to come in for a minute? I ask. We could, I don't know, talk? She smiles. Did you know that now you're eligible for jury duty? You can be called upon any time and you have to do it. And yay, we're back on the subject of being 18 again. I make a face. Excellent. Plus, now you can vote. I can't wait. You can enlist in the army, she adds as we make our way up the sidewalk and onto my front porch. No, thank you. I gaze at my house. The windows are dark, the living room curtains drawn. I wonder if dad's already at the hospital. You can buy fireworks, Nyla continues, or go skydiving, or go to real people jail. She gasps and grabs my arm. You can get married without the permission of your parents. I arch an eyebrow at her. That's great news, Nai. Too bad I'm single. She knows this. She also knows that I don't plan to get married until I'm at least 25. Though, speaking of which, there is one thing I do want to do, I say as I fumble with my keys at the front door, now that I am officially 18. Oh yeah? Nyla cocks her head at me, her curly hair like a dark halo around her head. Don't tell me you want to get your belly button pierced because I do not approve. Ouch, no. The lock clicks and the door swings open, but I stop and turn to face Nyla. I want to have sex, I announce. I think it's time. 
I'm ready. I don't know why I say it like that. It's not really the sex part I'm ready for, exactly. It's the boyfriend part. I'm 18 now, and I've never had a real boyfriend. I've gone on a few dates here and there, kissed a guy or two, made out a little, but I've never been in love, never felt that way about anybody. But somehow it's easier to talk about sex than it is to confess that I want to fall in love, which sounds cheesy. It's also fun to say something shocking to Nyla every now and then, which totally worked. She's frowning, staring past me over my shoulder into the dark house like she wants to go inside. Uh, Cass? I mean, obviously I don't want to have sex just for the sake of having sex, I clarify. That's stupid, I know. I want to be a responsible adult now that I'm actually an adult. I would want it to be with the right guy. And maybe the right guy won't come along this year because, come on, do we know any guys who are like boyfriend material? Not really, right? And I'm okay with that. Okay. Nyla still looks super uncomfortable. All I'm saying is, if the right guy does come along, I'm open to the idea of having sex. That said, I turn to go into the house and almost run smack into my dad inside the doorway. He's wearing a paper party hat, holding a flaming birthday cake, surrounded by my grandma and my Uncle Pete and like 10 of my friends. Surprise, my dad whispers. Oh my God. Yeah, he says. Yeah, I know. You were all standing here. He gives a painful smile. We were. I say go for it, honey, says Grandma. Seize the day. I'm a big no on this one, says Uncle Pete. No sex for you, possibly ever. Wait, how am I not considered boyfriend material, says my friend Bender. I'm like hot. Does this mean I'm going to need a shotgun, asks Dad. I'm humiliated for all of five seconds. But then Nyla starts giggling, which makes me start giggling. And then we're all outright laughing, then singing. And then I blow out the 18 candles on the cake.